think I'd even need rebar. No, I think it'll just leave it like that. Do it on its own. One. good enough okay well hello and welcome to outdoor oklahoma i'm todd craighead today one of our fisheries crews are stocking florida strain largemouth bass fingerlings here at lake thunderbird now we've learned a lot about where floridas do best in oklahoma since the 80s when we first began this program now luckily the northern boundary of where floridas do best in oklahoma is about our i-44 corridor which means all the lakes south and east of I-44 are on a heavily managed stocking schedule. Who knows, one of these fingerlings may just grow up to be a new state record largemouth bass. A wildlife department that understands a thing or two about growing and producing heart racing big largemouth bass. Just another reason to love Oklahoma and the adventures that await you. In my opinion, I have just as nice a piece of property as most people do, and they're all native plants. I'm convinced there's nothing you can't plant in a native that has its opposite in some popular imported plant. Uh, this is one of the few trees in the yard that isn't native. It's a Chinese fringe tree. I do have some American fringe trees in the yard. Uh, but I planted this thing years ago before I knew any better, and now it's so beautiful I just don't have the heart to cut it down. So <laughs> it stays. You know, when you move into a place like this, uh, this was just solid trees and, and weeds and native plants when we cleared it to build on, and you feel a little bit guilty that, you know, you're taking area away from wildlife that had existed there for years, so part of my philosophy was we'll try to add back to it and try to maintain the wildlife and keep them here, uh, keep them coming back. And to our right is a red horse chestnut, which is a beautiful little tree that attracts insects, butterflies, uh, and of course birds. Uh, hummingbirds love it as well. I started out planting native plants because I thought it was a way to easily maintain the property and attract wildlife. And that, yeah, that is great. But through all that, I grew almost as interested in the native plants as I did the wildlife I was trying to attract. Trees like this rusty black haw here, which is native to Oklahoma, great wildlife tree, attracts a lot of insects. It gets fruit on it that matures in the fall that attracts birds. Chalk maple, which is also native to Oklahoma. These understory trees are hawthorns. Great for nesting, they get berries on them. Uh, right there behind you is a nest box with a pair of chickadees nesting in it. Have babies in there right now. This is a red buckeye, native to Oklahoma, as is that shrub there. Great hummingbird tractor, as you might imagine. And a wafer ash over here, also native to Oklahoma. It's the host plant for the giant swallowtail caterpillars. Dead ahead of us here is a basswood. They call them basswood in America, linden trees in Europe. But in about two weeks, this tree will just be covered with blossoms. And it really pulls the bees, insects, pollinators. And it has a great fragrance, by the way. But it's the wildlife. You know, that's what started me. Uh, trying to give back a little bit to the wildlife that, again, when we developed this property, uh, trying to turn it back into a little bit of a wildscape for the wildlife that was already here and hopefully for the wildlife that was going to come. And this little area here, I tend to leave it kind of wild, uh, not normally quite this wild, but I wanted to wait for this plant here to come up so I knew where it was 
This is called wing stem, and it's a very important, very beneficial fall plant for the pollinators. Well, we have all the resident birds, the native birds, the blue jays, the cardinals, the tent mice, the chickadees, migratory birds as well. We get a lot of stopovers that come, indigo bunnings come and they nest here, and uh, Baltimore orioles come, they nest here, orchard orioles. You know, out back in the retaining walls out there, there's a lot of spaces out there for wildlife like groundhogs and foxes and, you know, uh, Deer, get, we get deer through here quite often. I've seen badgers out there. I, there's just uh, a whole fascinating world. No, I mean, I've always been interested in photography to a certain degree, but not wildlife photography. <laughs> Every time. Yeah, he saw us. I became more and more interested in it because I wanted to record all these things I was seeing. It was more of a thing that I could go back and say, hey, okay, uh, you know, I can go there now and I can look and see when the Baltimore Orioles arrived last year because I've got pictures of them when they came here. You can do that with a notebook as well. But man, there's nothing like having a photograph. And I became more knowledgeable with my photography because I studied the birds, studied their habits, learned how I might be able to track them in to get photographs of them to start with. Uh, and they both passions just kind of grew from there. I thought, how can I set up a blind here that will pull the birds in and I can shoot them uh, without really disturbing them? The more I studied it, the more I thought, well, gosh, I've got the perfect setup right out there on the south side. If I just put some feeders out there and put some bird baths out there, I can sit right in the garage, crack the door open a little bit, take photos within 20 or 30 feet of me. Uh, they tend to come in here and be real comfortable because I'm out of sight, just like you would be in a bird blind. And it keeps me out of the weather, you know, <laughs> which is a real plus for me. You know, in my opinion, what I have done here is really pretty simple. I mean, it, you know, I've put in some trees, I've put in a few shrubs, I've put in a few flowers. It didn't break the bank. Uh, it wasn't, I mean, it was some work, sure. But I didn't do anything here that anybody couldn't do in their neighborhood. And can you imagine if we had whole neighborhoods full of stuff like this, the wildlife we would have, what benefit that would be to our to our earth, to our wildlife, to people. Uh, well, I can't encourage people enough to just start small. Just start with a little piece of ground here and make little islands like I've done here for the wildlife and for you.
over the years, my truck has made some cameo appearances on Outdoor Oklahoma, but I've never taken the time to really show you exactly how I've kind of uh, personalized this to my own needs. So come take a look. It's my deer camp on wheels. Yeah, I could have bought an RV or some type of uh, trailer, but that wouldn't have been near as fun. <laughs> to start out with, years ago, like maybe 12 years ago, I had the idea of building in a false floor in the truck bed and then building out some actual drawers for storage space. And there's companies out there that make these, but I thought I could do it myself, a whole lot cheaper, and kind of suit my own needs as I went. So, this is my homemade version. Now to start out with, one of the things that I needed to accomplish was how I could get these drawers out without it really being extremely difficult. So. I made little casters, inline casters that are inset that actually roll on the plywood in the bottom of the bed. I just, I put a, a regular old Coleman cot in here and I decided that that storage underneath the, the cot was a lot of wasted, unutilized space. So I made a little drawer door with a magnet here. And then this can hold things like my tackle bag, camping chair, a uh, little table, um, all kinds of different things I can stick in there. Now, even though I do have a lantern in there that's extremely bright, especially since the inside of the shell is white, sometimes that's a little too much, especially in the evening if I'm just watching a movie on my iPad. So I ordered off of Amazon a little battery operated set of LED strip lighting that I run around the top of the windows, which at night gives me plenty of light without just blinding me with a big bright lantern. So one of the great things about this build is that I've got all kinds of power back here too. I put a, a great big boat battery in a flip up little lid that allows me to have two USB ports and two 12 volts and this little switch boom is lights that run up here to the top of the hatch those little things were cheap but man that lights this whole area up at night it's just perfect now it's not just running on that battery I've actually got a solar panel on the top of the cab and that is essentially keeping this boat battery charged up. The solar panel keeps the battery charged. The battery provides me all this power back here. This is another one of my favorite parts of this whole system. pretty self-explanatory, but this is how I sight in rifles each year before deer season. I've got my own built-in bench rest. Remember your safety. And don't put your finger on the trigger till you're ready to fire. Anytime. Woo! 
So one lesson I learned early on on this build was that I don't have any business trying to climb in and out over the tailgate, especially at my age and when you have to get up several times in the middle of the night. So I fixed up a way that's a lot safer and actually a lot quieter too. Sometimes when I'm deer hunting, I don't want to make a whole lot of noise in the middle of the night where I'm hunting. So I got a row. I bent up a bungee cord hook, drilled a hole right through there. And this is my pull rope once I'm inside to pull the tailgate closed. So I did get a topper on this truck that's a little bit higher than the cab. Uh, the last truck that I had this built in was the cab was or the shell was as high as the cab, which really uh, didn't give me much headroom at all. So I upgraded to a little bit higher of a cap and I can even sit on a little seat here now um, pretty comfortably. Now, one of my bigger problems is being able to reach stuff when I'm in here without it being a whole lot of effort. So my buddy and I made a little type of uh, adaptive tool that I can use that I can reach things with it from in here that I can literally even turn on my lantern. <laughs> I could even, when it's time for house shoes, I've got those with a string on them. I can move my house shoe around to me or reach clothes underneath here in the, in the shelf. But it, it makes everything accessible from sitting in one spot so I'm not constantly moving around in here trying to reach stuff or get to things. So the more I use this setup, the more little extra amenities that I find out that I, uh, I could really benefit from. And one of those was repurposing a phone magnet holder that you would have in a vehicle. You know, these are very popular nowadays, the magnet, but boop, it sits right there so that when I'm in bed, I can be looking at the phone uh, or easily get to it in the dark when the alarm goes off. I also have my phone charger cord that's plugged in way at the front down there on a big long t cord that's underneath the cot and comes right here that I can charge my phone off of solar power. One of my more fun, creative uh, ideas was how to open that tailgate from inside uh, without sliding out myself onto the floor, which I've actually done. So <laughs> I made a little string that's on a hook that goes down to the tailgate. And to open it up, I just pull and voila, it's open. <laughs> So this may be more elaborate than what you would ever need, or you might even think of your own additional things that you could do to a truck camp camping bed. But um, this thing saves me a lot of time. It saves me gas because I'm not going back and forth hunting every single day. I can camp and hunt right on location. And really honestly, for me, it's just perfect. woodpeckers are one of the quintessential black and white woodpeckers. They have a black crown and really noticeable white cheek patches. The back is black with white barring and the chest and the belly is white with black barring. And with a name like red cockaded woodpecker, you would think there would be some red patch somewhere on the head that would help you identify the bird. Instead, the white cheek patches are really the best identification feature. Adult males do have a small patch of red feathers on either side of the head, but those red patches are rarely visible. 
These birds are habitat specialists and rely on open, mature pine forests. In Oklahoma, that habitat is limited to the Washita Mountains, so historically, the birds were only found in the southeastern corner of the state. That range has gotten smaller and smaller with habitat changes, and today, the state's last remaining birds are thought to only occur on the McCurtain County Wilderness Area and the nearby Washita National Forest. The Wildlife Department, U.S. Forest Service, and U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service are working to improve habitat conditions for the birds. Biologists have added nesting inserts in the trees to encourage the birds to stay and nest on the area area, but more importantly, they're using prescribed fire to keep the forest open and in the best condition for the birds. The red cockaded woodpecker is federally listed by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service as an endangered species. To help monitor the birds, biologists will climb to the nest in the spring and they'll add identification bands to the chick's legs. Then they'll do surveys in the spring and the fall to track the movements and survival of the population. For more information on Oklahoma's incredibly diverse species, check out our many resources at wildlifedepartment.com. There you can browse field guides, share wildlife sightings, and subscribe to The Wild Side, our monthly e-newsletter dedicated to non-game conservation efforts. Well, we hope today's stories remind you that Oklahoma is a perfect place to explore. So no matter how you choose to enjoy our state's incredible natural world, remember, your adventure starts with outdoor Oklahoma. Oh, you can still see them all schooled up there together. Outdoor Oklahoma is produced by the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation and is proud to serve and be funded entirely by sportsmen and women and outdoor enthusiasts who love and appreciate all things wild in the great state of Oklahoma.